Yo, 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 What it do? What it do? Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your man, DJ Caveman, DJ Iron Monkey. Yo, we about to go live on the Spreaker app right now for the Saturday conversation. Yes, we know it's motherfucking Sunday, but, you know, shit happens. And yesterday, your boy was driving back from Philly. I'm saying out there we're, we're, with the not so silent producer <laughs> doing Philly things, but we're gonna get into that in a second. First thing we gotta do is always hit this punch clock over here on uh, on the speakers so we could be extra live and direct. Yes. What up, Gweed? Shout out to the homie Gweed in the chat. Uh, let's see what we got going on over here. We're gonna push the button and we're gonna get started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, though? It's your man, DJ Caveman. Yeah, and DJ I Monkey. Back again for another Saturday conversation. Yes. Sunday edition. Back at it like Back a crack addict. Back at it like a crack addict. <laughs> uh, it's a special day in the universe, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. A couple weeks ago, we had DJ Iron Monkey hitting the 4-1. Mm-hmm. 4-1. 41. 41. Today, right now, as we're speaking, it's uh, your man, DJ Caveman. You know what I'm saying? We hit 42 this morning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I drank to that. I'm officially a man of a certain age. Yes, I'm You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, went to the gym this morning, got my pump on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Snatched up some big weights. Big papa pump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> got, the, got, the, got the guns out. Mm-hmm. Sun's out. Guns out, as they say. <laughs> they do? They do. Sun's out, guns out. You know what I'm saying? But it's my birthday, on. so we're going to celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Got my, uh, my drink of choice. Uh, Wham. Label out. Label out. Hashtag label out. Kettle one. Send mm-hmm. a check. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we're about to pour some. Get Got my purple there. label. Got the purple label. Mm-hmm. Like the purple tape. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Saying? Cash rules or ice cream. Or yeah. Whatever the fuck. Raycorn shit. That's me pouring a little bit of vodka. Uh, cash rules everything around uh, me. That's a lot more than a little bit of vodka. But, you know, fuck it. Hey, it's your birthday. You know what I'm saying? Cheers, my nigga. I drink to that. <laughs> yeah, man. So, it's been kind of a busy week, man. Like, you were saying that you just, yeah. got, just got back from Philly yesterday, too, huh? <laughs> Yeah, just got back from Philly, man. Philly's a cool town. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to all my folks down that's in Philly right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Philly, Philly. My, the homie Christina and her husband mm-hmm. Eric came out to eat with us. We went to the smooth little Cuban spot down in uh, Center City. Um, but Philly, yo, first of all, <laughs> I don't want to talk bad about Philly because Philly was it wasn't bad. It's just different. This is different how people move and shake down there, man. Like, yeah, this is a different cast uh, of characters. This is a different cast of characters. Y'all got to do something about the parking in the turning lane, though. Mm. Like, build some parking garages or something. Like, people just park in the turning lane, and that's kind of weird. Nah, that's what you get when you come to Philly. Um, <laughs> I had uh, this this time. I had the cheesesteak at uh, by George's, and it was uh, the tastiest cheesesteak mm. that I've had. But it was on a sesame roll. Which kind of oh. took away. It kind of took away from the whole sandwich experience because I don't really like sesame bread. Because wait, who who are the two big ones? Is Geno's and it's, who's it's the other Gino's one? Geno's and uh, I'm not from Philly. I'm from Brooklyn, so uh, I can tell. It's Geno's and then there's a spot across the street from Geno's. I yeah. haven't even been there yet. Yeah, yeah, because uh, they always have the, the one the tours. Where they always have all the tourists and shit. Mm. Um, so we went to Tony Luke's the last time and they had a good steak and cheese too, but it was like mad greasy. Mm. Like, my hands was greasy afterwards, and I was like, I don't know about this. But right, what uh, makes a good uh, steak and cheese for you? Um, how good they season the steak, and just the combination of the flavors, how they do it. Does it have to be like steakums, or does it have to be nah, like, like real, not, real deal steak? I mean, I prefer that it's real deal steak, but, mm. you know, mm. different strokes for different folks. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their... There's so many cheesesteak spots mm. in Philly that everybody tries to do their shit a little different. Yeah, you, you know, know what, what I'm saying? Like, like just... Like, we went to... Um, the spot, uh, Reading Terminal Market, mm-hmm. that Will was talking. Shout out to Will. Uh, yeah. Will was talking about getting Adam the, the Reading Red Terminal Market. So we went over there, and it's like food overload, man. There's so many different mm. foods going on at the same time, from like crepes to seafood to oh, cheesesteaks to barbecue to soul food. I haven't had a crepe in a long time. Um, shit, I love crepes. So they got like a little smooth crepery. It is, it's packed down there all the time because mm. it's like right in the... Right in the downtown, and it's like so many places that the you can go trap. eat. Yeah, mm. but uh, it was the first time I had a, a like a, a cheese steak on a sesame roll, uh, right. and that was like the only thing that took away from the sandwich. It was like ah, the sandwich is good, but the sesame roll is like killing it right now. Yeah, but yeah, because that's like that's like New York and um, pizza. Yeah, like, but it's not just pizza; it's raised pizza because there's 
famous Ray's, Ray's, not famous Ray's pizza, <laughs> the original Ray's. They got so many different Ray pizzas. I'm like, yo, since when did Ray become the pizza guy? Like, yeah. I don't remember Ray being that guy like that. But yeah, Philly but, was cool. The hotel was cool. It was like right on the water. It was like a little, mm-hmm. little uh, low key rundown joint. But it was clean and shit. You know it didn't saying? have a mirror on the wall though, did it? Uh, on the ceiling. Nah, there was no mirror on the ceiling. There was no mirror on the ceiling. <laughs> the vibrating bed? Nah, nah, nah. It wasn't one of them joints, right, but it was right, it was right. smooth. The right. showers was hot and it was clean and fucking. You didn't have to share with nobody else. Nah, like, nah, like, nah. Like in the hallway type shit. Nah, it was okay, cool. It was okay, cool. Okay. Uh, Stay away from the hostlets, man. You know, shout out to the Bronx and my GPS took me through the Bronx. <laughs> um, I got to see like Dykeman, like firsthand. Yeah, you, you know, see like, what it's about. Like firsthand Dykeman. Yeah, uh, you hear about shit it. Was, shit was different. She was different. Yeah, you can hear um, about it all you want, but like until you actually experience it, on Dykeman, like, and you see like the shit that happens. <laughs> oh, Dykeman! And I was just in traffic, and the shit that I saw while I was in traffic, mm. I was like, "Wow, wow, it's really popping down here." Um, oh my god, fucking hell, my face! What else did we do? Uh, we didn't really do too much, man. We went on some touristy shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got pictures. I just was, I was, I was too busy, like, to really try to post pictures. Shout out to the meter maid. In Philly, they didn't give me the ticket. The one that you almost hit? Nah, nah, nah. I didn't almost hit her, but uh, <laughs> I was walking to my car, and I always hit my auto start. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I hit the auto start. She came from behind my car like she was about to write me a ticket, but then she didn't. So shout out to the Philadelphia meter made chicks that don't write tickets. It sounds like you should shout out the guy that invented that auto start shit. Shout because... out to the motherfuckers that invented auto start because that probably saved me the ticket. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even know who invented auto start, but you know. Michael Knight? Probably. Mm-hmm. We'll, give, we'll give Michael Knight the credit. Well, no, nah, he didn't even invent kit. He just drove kit. Yeah. It was the, the other, other dude, dude. The other, what the fuck is his, his name? Devin? Dev, yeah, I think his name was Devin. Devin, yeah. From Knight Rider and shit. Shout out to David Hasselhoff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Hoff. The Hoff. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> what else is happening, man? Was how was your week? Uh, Weekend. Um, my week was pretty good. It was it was a short week because we had what Monday off. Oh yeah, yeah. Monday was yeah, the holiday. Yeah, yeah. Monday was the holiday, so we had I had that off. But then during the week, after I did the the R and B podcast, I've been working on this reggae podcast for my uncle, my favorite uncle named Kurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That vodka is gonna kick catch up to you. Oof. Um, but yeah, no, I just finished that reggae mix and the first time I've ever done a reggae mix took me forever to like get the courage up to do it because I respect the, the genre and the, the selectors that do it, like select the bomb bomb and select the Paul Michaels, Rhode Island zone. Right. Um, but because I respect it so much, I'd never wanted to tip my, put my foot into that, that realm. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. This is for my uncle. I got to do it for him. Um, I did the gospel one for my mother. I did an R and B one for my my sister. I did one for my kids. Um, so I just had to get around to my uncle. So show him respect and you know give him the flowers and the music while he can enjoy him. So, Word. but other than that, just took it simple. Try to rest. I need to fucking shave my face and get back to normal because after all of that shit, it's now the the upcoming shit like. What we got next weekend, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but... Yo, we got big things happening this week, man. It's all oh, right. yeah. We'll just touch it real quick, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be our social our social event. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time, you know what I'm saying? We're just going to do a social event. Come out, hang out with us yep. uh, over at the Alibi. Yep. Uh, I'm going to be on the wheels, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I'm, I'm going to be on gonna, the smoke. We're going we're gonna to keep it We're gonna keep it packed. We're going to have a good time. Uh, um, I should say I'm on the grill. Shout out to the homie TJ Soares in the building. Yo, he got a new he got a new record out. Oh, where? Yeah, oh, man, yeah, he got a yeah, new record yeah. out. I listened to it, cover to cover, very solid. Yeah, very solid record. He got he got a couple hits on there. So head on over to TJ Soares on the mm-hmm. uh, on the Spotify. He's gonna be back on the show soon as well. That's the Corleone brothers, the huh? Cor- yeah, Corleone, Corleone records. records. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to them, man. Huh? Shout out to them. Uh, TJ gonna be on the show. Um, Soon, a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. So he'll be back on the show to promote the record, and uh, we'll play some of that shit when he's here, too. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it's yeah. dope. It's good. It's good music. It's good music. Because, no, like, I, I like when like when some of our, our guests come out, and not just be on our show, but, like, come out to our functions and actually listen to the show when they're not on our show. So that that's always, nah. a, that's always a given. But, like, shouting out some of our past guests that have been on the show, like, like TJ... And Coleon Records, but also Dale Cover, he had 
um, an open mic on Wednesday. Oh, yeah? Um, at uh, Koto's, downtown Providence. What is it? Koto, K-O-T-O. Never heard of it. No, it's a little um, little Spanish place owned by where um, Bar Louis is in that same little plaza. Area. Oh, word, word, word. It's a little sushi place. Yo, they, yo, that uh, lychee lemonade shit was dumb strong, B. <laughs> like, oh, shit. that shit was strong. But I was gonna get up on stage and do do some some open mic comedy, but it was like almost eleven o'clock. They had like three other people in front of me. Plus, I had to wait for the feature to finish. So I'm like. Nah, I got work tomorrow, so I gotta go. Right, I was so, already at work. That's why I wasn't there. But I like to try to get out and support whenever I can. Yeah, hey, yeah. do more shit on the weekends, people. That like, you doing stuff on like Tuesday, Wednesday? I can't. I'm never gonna make that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Do the calls and. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a big shock tank on the weekends. Everybody doing shit on the weekends. I know. I know. So so it's like you get in where you fit in. Like no if you're trying to build up your your, your 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 open mic during the week is the best. Plus, like if I'm gonna do an open mic, number one, it's free. And this was part of my this was part of my my thing. Number one, it's free to get in. Right. Number two, I'm not getting paid, so these jokes are for free. So there's no pressure on me to make you laugh. No and doubt. Entertain you. I'm, I'm I'm not gonna put that pressure on me. So I'm shout gonna out go to out. my cousin Jovian in the in the in the, in the chat and uh, Bob Carroll. Yeah, yeah. Senya, on, mm-hmm. uh, in, Col- the, in the chat right now. Cool. Um, no, but see, like if 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 it's on the weekend though, or open no, mic I'm on not the weekend, like the weekend. I'm just saying like Thursday. No, but, no, no, but like open mic on the weekends. What happens is is it's the weekend, so oh, it's no, a prime everybody's time doing area. some shit. Yeah, you got to get paid on the weekend, but yeah. And I'm maybe, like, yo, maybe it's if I can get pressure. like a like a Thursday open mic though, because then I could come down and see what's popping. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no, there's the salon joint. I got to take you over to that one. I uh, will get over to it eventually. Uh, oh, yeah, no, plus, you bowl on Thursday too, right? Yeah, but I can. Pre bowl, pre bowl and shit. You know what All right, so um, this Thursday we should work out. I'm um, going out to the um, thing. Uh, maybe. maybe so I'll make sure that it's not like a position shit. Position rounds we can't pre bowl for them shits. Oh, oh, like oh, 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 where the money gets made. Bowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for your bowling. All right. But I'm definitely. We're almost done. We got like seven weeks left. So. All right. And then, then it's the summer and shit. But uh. Mm. <laughs> Hot but, uh, shit. What else happened, man? Like we had a uh, we had a we had a decent week, man. Mm. Like school vacation, so the kids was out. All right. Um, oh, they got the whole week? Some of them. Some of them got the whole week. Because my son got Monday and Tuesday off. Yeah, it was a lot of kids only had Monday and Tuesday, but a few, a few schools had the whole week. Um, hmm. But uh, what was I going to say? Yo, did we already talk about the All-Star game? Nah. Think, nah. Nah, we didn't so talk about that. We didn't all, talk about the All-Star all the other, game. Other sporting events. But. Uh, real quick on the All-Star game, because it happened last week. Everybody seen that shit. Um, yeah, homeboy got robbed. I thought it was good. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't really like how it ended. No, you know, with the free throws and shit. Oh, with with the actual game. Okay. Yeah, yeah, with the okay. actual game and shit. Um, but you know, it was good basketball. Like they, 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 the way they did the quarters and shit. Like, and that's what I was telling was you like, because you was, was like, eh. it was smoother than I thought it was gonna be. Because you, at first, when, when I was explaining it to you, you was like, eh, huh, you know, I'm gonna tune in, but I'm not expecting them too much. Nah, it was much smoother than I thought it would be. Yeah. And they actually played that fourth quarter. They actually played like there was some shit on the line. So, mm-hmm. uh, yo, that block on LeBron though, Ooh. Ooh. and they had to review Man. that. Yo, shout out to the Greek freak with the oh, L block on LeBron. He, he pushed his shit to the like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yo, that was that was cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, old boy got robbed from the dunk contest, but you know we five straight perfect scores and he still lost. Yeah, he's never doing another dunk contest ever again. Nah, like he's like fuck yo, that shit. The, yo, the whack thing about that was it's like yo. Damn, I, I want this motherfucker on my Knicks, man. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what they're doing with him in Orlando, but yeah, nothing. A, after we get a after we get a point guard, a bona fide, legitimate Damian Lillard, Chris Paul type level point guard, then we can start looking at athletic dudes, and then start to play like a fancy free style of ball that people want to see inside New York, outside of you know that fake ass Jeremy Lin. Bullshit, <laughs> like, I, like he's probably the only dude that I, I hate with a passion, for no damn reason, and that's not even a healthy hate. <laughs> like it's <laughs> so unhealthy for me to hate in this dude. I don't know what it is, but all that aside, but nah, I wanted him on my next team, man. Yo, but this week, this Saturday, mm-hmm. yesterday, uh, yep, yesterday, the, oh. fight, the fight of the the fight of the year. Uh, they said the most anticipated. The most anticipated boxing match in yeah. in a in a while. They said more yeah. anticipated than the first fight. Two two undefeated heavyweights. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
Tyson Fury. Oh, yeah. And uh, Deontay Wilder. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Clash of Styles, two big ass dudes. <laughs> mm, six, seven, and six, nine. Ooh, throwing two, the two lumber. 35, 270. Throwing that shit And the they're just beating the shit out of each other. Well, at least that's what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. And uh, come to find out that uh, only one person got their ass beat. Yeah, spoiler alert. Nah, the fight was yesterday. If you didn't get the pay per view, yeah, you got to wait a week to see that shit for free anyway. So. Oh, HBO, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, no, no, no. Not even on show. It was on ESPN. So you probably watch that shit now. Mm. But, uh. Yeah. Spo- yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, that, that ain't no spo- If you watch Sports Center this morning, you already know this shit. Yeah, dude uh, got his neck licked the, uh, and his ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it was, uh. To his benefit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He got punched in the ear. And his eardrum exploded, and he was yeah. bleeding all over the place. And then, like that shit, really fucked with his balance. I mm. think it would have been a much better fight if he wasn't so wobbly. Mm. Um, I had I had Fury winning on the decision because I think he's just a better boxer. Yeah, his, um, yeah, his footwork is much better by far. But uh, and plus he trained with he trained at Kronk. He went back to the Kronk method. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like another Kronk gym champion. All right. I came out of the mix. It's a special a special style of boxing that comes out of Kronk, man. Mm. It's heavy with the jab work, uh, and it's, it's very busy. So mm. um, I really don't know if... Uh, he stepped up his activity levels. Yeah, like he stepped up his game. He put, put the weight on. He got busier. Um, but uh, I think that... Um, I think that like that like the fight went the way that Fury wanted it to go, mm. and after like I said after the third round like it was uh it was uncomfortable for Wilder man like even the look on his face. No, see for me, the look on his face when they were doing the introductions it showed to me that something wasn't right. Like it just it didn't look like he was drained. It just looked like something was going on, and he didn't look like he had the. St- like the the focus to actually take it to this dude. It looked like he was on his heels from the jump. Yeah, a little bit, but you know what? Like, yo, dude, you're making thirty million dollars for this shit. Like, you got to bring your A game no matter what. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I honestly think that, like, you know, psychologically, he was a little still fucked up from the first shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause, you know, you hit a motherfucker that hard, mm-hmm. and the way that Fury hit the canvas and then got back up, like that got to be playing in his brain. Because now it's like, but also like a dude like Wilder who's only been fighting for you know a handful of years, ten or so years, fourteen years, something like that. Yeah, which 14 is or so. Yeah. Not a long time in boxing. Like he started late. He yeah. didn't start when he was eight years old, like most motherfuckers. Mm. And uh, he doesn't have enough in his in his bag, like, like cause he get he gets. He he's been able to get away with a straight one two yeah. for so long that he didn't have to work on his footwork. He didn't have to work like, on me, anything else. A couple of things with that fight. Number one, his footwork is always a problem for me because if your footwork and you don't have this the solid base below you, if you trip and now your ear is busted, yeah, obviously you're gonna be off kilted. But it's not gonna it's gonna be even made worse when you have poor footwork. So if your footwork and you barely have balance with a good ear, with a bad ear, you're going to look like a real deal drunk fool in that ring. That's number one. Number two, yo, that headlock was killing him. Yo, he was putting him in the DDT yo, setup the whole time. Yo, that headlock was killing him that <laughs> whole fight. And it's not just a regular headlock. It's a headlock and now it's pressure on the back of your neck and on your head. So now when, when you come out the headlock, now, if you come up too quick, you got a pinch. Uh, it's a little tight. It's not supposed to be because you're a motherfucking professional. But, you know, that headlock was killing him. Yeah, he was getting uh, Oh, man. That, that, for me, was the equivalent to when Mike Tyson was fighting uh, Evander Holyfield. And Holyfield kept headbutting him with, with the little headbutts and then rubbing it on Tyson. That, that for me... Was why I thought Tyson bit him, but all that aside, Ty- Tyson, you shouldn't have bit him. But I saw, I, I understood why. The bite? Yeah. I mean, yo, no, because really and truly, you're in a fight and somebody keeps headbutting you, and you know a headbutt is illegal, and they keep doing it. Like, yo, the fuck? Yo, you tell the ref, the ref's not doing anything, so now you're like, I gotta take, you know, take matters into my own hand. You know, fuck a people's court. 
Like I'm I'm gonna take care of this shit. So I don't I didn't like the fact that he did what he did, but I understood it. I'm not gonna condone it, but I understood it. I don't know, man. I, I think that uh, overall, you know, what I mean, it was a good fight. Oh yeah. But uh, I think that this time around, he was just a little bit like outmatched. He when didn't look came, like he was ready down at to it. all. His approach to the ring too, like the dude. Yeah. I do like the uh, I, the, the rapper dude. Uh, the rapper dude was a little weird, but I do like the uh, I do like the, um, the oh, crown oh, and the shit. Yeah. The face mask. I really enjoy that shit. Yeah, I, I uh, love that. And not just that, when he was walking through the back hallway, they, he had a bunch of um, images on the screen of black athletes to celebrate Black History Month. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And all of the black uh, athletes that he admired and had aspire, uh, inspired him to do what he does. But that was a bad look, though, V. That was a bad look all around. Um, your boy, Pop Smoke, died. Yeah, oh, it's not my boy. But I didn't really, honestly, like... I don't even think I could name off a Pop Smoke song, but, Mm -mm. you know, whenever uh, these young kids get murdered, like, it's not a good thing for, for, for hip hop music. Well, and But you also got to be smarter. Like, I, I I feel like I heard somewhere that, like, he put his address out. Oh, what? I don't know if he did. I I didn't get into all the talk. Or it was on something. It was uh, on social media. It's like, all right, you know, I'm going out, you know, or I'm, I'm here in town. Yo, holla at your boy. You know, I'm fitting to go to X, Y, and Z nightclub. So, yeah, you know, that's the thing about social media, that people use it to promote themselves. But then it's also putting you on the note notice of of criminals. Because I know me and you spoke about this off, off mic, and it's gen- just general knowledge. Like, like, if you're going on, like, a, on a, like a two-month cruise... Don't put it online that you're going on a two month cruise unless you have right. a house sitter. Because motherfuckers are going to run up in your shit, like for sure. Yeah, it'd be like, ah, this motherfucker is on a two month you know, cruise. So, I mean, like, if they knew kind of where he was and they just ran up in his crib, and that's yeah. kind of shitty, you know what I mean? Like, but also, like, you got to get to a level where you have to have security, man. Like, you're famous now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have security. Like, I don't give a fuck what kind of street cred you want to have. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When you mm. get to a certain level, you got too many motherfuckers that's not. On your side, you know what I'm saying? Like but, they're looking for that. They're gangsta, looking for that. Come up, man. But Gangsta had that song back in the day about how niggas act hard, but they can't walk the streets without their bodyguard. So it's like, yo, if you're gonna talk that hard shit, you gotta walk it without your bodyguard. So how are you gonna talk all this tough talk and then you got a bodyguard in front of you? Yo, you ain't tough. That's like being a, a internet thug. You're online just trying to harass people and sending them a bunch of messages. Like, yo. How come you can't say this to my face? It's the same thing about like walking around with a bodyguard. No, I'm not saying you gotta walk. I mean, I, shit. I mean, look, man. If you're gonna talk the talk, you're gonna have to walk the walk. I'm, listen, I could tell my bodyguards to go stand in the corner, and I'll still beat your ass. Like it's not. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The bodyguards are not there for. The bodyguards are there to take that L for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, if, take that bullet. If motherfuckers, yeah, that's what I pay them for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if motherfuckers roll up with the, with all the guns, like that's why I keep bodyguards. Because if it's all the guns, if it's for? just me and I got a gun, mm-hmm. and it's five motherfuckers and they all got guns, mm-hmm. and I ain't got no squad with me, I'm gonna just get shot a bunch of times mm-hmm. and it'll shoot out. Unless you're John Wick, but that's a whole. But I'm not thing. John Wick. You know what I'm saying? Like I could get a couple motherfuckers, but and you got security. That's what your security is for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, it don't make you. You know, I feel like it don't make you like less of a gangster if you got motherfuckers who's, if no. you got shooters, because all gangsters got shooters. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't like you, you, you a tough guy like on your no. own. Like you got shooters, man. Like hire some motherfuckers to protect but, your to protect your assets. What if his family was in there? You know what I'm saying? Like you, he, he was a, young, but like you don't want motherfuckers just running up in your shit when you're mm. not there and your family's there. You know what I'm saying? Like what if mm. they ran up in there at the wrong time? Yeah. See, the whole thing though is is that. You talk the talk, and then people are going to test you. That too. Like, just to see how tough you really are. Like, yo, this motherfucker talk all this tough talk and all this shit. Yo, yo, let's see what he's about. Right? So, yeah, there's that too. But I've been saying this for a long time. Rap is a contact sport nowadays, B. Like, if even in, um, whatchamacallit, battle raps. Like, dudes be in each other's faces. Like... 
It makes me feel uncomfortable watching some of it. I'm like, yo, this motherfucker can't be in my face this close with his stink ass breath. Like, yo, you can spit hot rhymes, but don't be spitting that hot shit on my face. Like, I can't deal with that. Like, you're gonna get snuffed or mushed the fuck out of my face. Like, it. But that's, that's why you're not a battle rapper, dog. That's why I'm not a battle rapper. Your, your battle rappers would be your battle raps would be turning into like real battles, real fights. Like <laughs> it's not even a battle rap; it's a rap battle. Oh no, no, it's a battle rap because it's a battle first, and then you rap afterwards. Yeah, you know, maybe all rap battles should have fights first, or well, fights after. Kind of like um, how they had that um, chess boxing. Yeah, like round one is like 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 you play chess and then you like you box all around and then you go play some chess for two minutes and then you go back and box. Yeah. Like you, you, you spit your verse, mm-hmm. and he spits his verse. And then y'all just fight for like three minutes. Yeah, and then you catch this ill uh, roundhouse kick to your and then to your chin. And then if you're not knocked out, then you get another verse. Mm-hmm. Then no, but you know what's whack though in that scenario. Your motherfuckers would be losing the battle even though, like, cause you Yo. get, you spit the hottest lyrics, but then you get your ass beat on the other end. Do you win the battle? Like no, but that's you, what that's losing, what I was thinking. Is that yo? They will have losing the fight that, part of the battle, but you win in the lyric part of the battle. See, did you win the battle? This is what's gonna happen in my in my in my thing, right? In my camp. All right, so it's my team against your team. Easy. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let all my thugs go in front. No rhymes. No, nah, it's just you. Patty whack punching your lip. It's just you <laughs> in the battle though. It's just you. Uh, it's just one on one. It's not team battles. It's well, like well, like. It, yeah, nah. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's that. you versus Papa Doc. And then you gotta... Yeah, me against Logic. Be like, yo, I'm gonna knock this motherfucker out. And then all of a sudden, he comes with this ill Capwell shit. Yeah, and like, he, he beats your ass between red, between rhymes, but you killing him on the rhymes. Nah, 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 man. You know what I'm saying? From motherfucking Brooklyn. Flatbush, baby. <laughs> Can't no motherfucking Logic serve me. Yo, Logic is nice, though. Logic is nice, but he's just not my cup of tea. He's nice. I'm not, I'm not picking him over Sean Price. Logic is nice. Now, I don't know if I pick him over Sean Price, but Logic yeah. is nice. His album is dope. It is. Yeah, I got it, fucks it, with Logic. He got, he got great production value. I, I'll give him that. Um, but Sean Price is from Brooklyn, and I'm going to keep it in Brooklyn, baby. All right. <laughs> yeah, fuck uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, I don't know if you noticed this shit, but... Uh, J Lo's like sixty five years old, still looking good, did a motherfucker. Fifty. Fifty something. Fifty. 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 Fifty one. She liked to kick and stretch. But uh <laughs> like that Saturday night life special. She done fucked around and got all these house moms thinking that they could post pictures of bikinis of themselves. No, no. Nah, Auntie's been doing that for a long time. But uh J Lo done fucked around and, and put up a bikini picture in her bathroom. Mm. And now she's inspired. Now listen, J Lo looked good to the motherfucker. Like for fifty, she don't look fifty. She's forever a fly girl. I don't care what nobody says. Uh, from, from a living color, <laughs> yo, hell yeah, buddy. yeah, yeah. Money, from money, tra- background dancer, money train J Lo. <laughs> no, this is even before money train. Oh, before J-Lo. money, yeah, of course. But like, she's a backup dancer. Money, money train J Lo is my favorite J Lo. I don't think that J Lo should sing. Um, and she's marginal as an actress, but uh, wasn't she in that psychological? She's the box. Was she in the box? I know she was in the Enough. No, no. She's, she's been in some good movies. Like she's, um, she has a she has a wealth of roles. You know, but uh, she wasn't naked in the Hustler. Was it the Hustler, the Hustle, whatever the fuck the strip club movie? Hustler she can't play a stripper and not be naked. J Lo, I'm just saying. Uh, um, yeah. But anyway, J Lo went online and posted this picture. Now J Lo got abs and shit. And yo, why she look extra mean in that picture though? Right, she got the serious face on. Damn, yo, she got um, yo. Yo, she got that Nazi look on her. She face. got the bikini rocking and shit. Ooh, so the, now she got the V popping. Now it's like a whole <laughs> yeah. She got the V. You know what I'm saying? She got the fucking. Uh, she got like five, six abs. You know what I'm saying? She got. The, it's not like a six pack, but you know, you could tell she's strong. Anyway, no, no, she she got the bonus joint. She got so the extra two. She J-Lo has pop. apparently been inspiring other moms. Uh, now J Lo's fifty, so oh, she got other moms now putting on. The similar type bathing suits. All right, well, she she got a little keg. And going in their bathrooms, like, and taking pictures, like, first thing. Is she two months pregnant? I don't know what's happening. First, <laughs> first thing, right? So we're just look, we're going through, we're looking at some of these pictures, just so you know we, what, the, what the content of it all is. Mm-hmm. Uh, first thing that I would recommend before you take the bathroom selfie, make sure your motherfucking bathroom is clean. You know what I'm saying? Don't That's nobody... a big motherfucking bathroom. Wait, is that a, a, a baby stroller? 
Yo, on the floor in I the don't bathroom? Know. She got wild shit in her bathroom. This one picture. And this chick is in decent shape. She's not terrible. But uh Yo, Spanish chick love white dudes. She got the she got the weird, like random dude in the back. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a dude. Who knows? He's like plucking his nose Who hit. the fuck knows what that guy is doing in the background? Plucking she got nose. the fucking dirty toothbrushes. At least her mirror is clean, though. Her mirror is clean. Yo, but she got the ill Asian bulge. Um, <laughs> what? And she, this lady says she's almost 40. Uh, let's see if there's another picture on here. There's another lady. Uh, she's not in J-Lo shape at all. She, she's uh, decent. But, you know, I'm not, going, I'm not on here to body shame. You know no, what I'm no. saying? I'm just saying that, like... No, no. See, she... And she got on the proper bathing suit, at least. You know what? Y- yeah. She got, she got a proper bathing like, suit. So, rule number one, make sure your motherfucking bathroom is clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure your mirror is clean. Make sure you got the weird shit out of the background. Nobody wants to see the other Wait, shit. Wait, is that your phone or is that on her? Nah. Yeah, she got... Yeah. She, ew, she got stains. Make sure your bathing suit is clean. Uh, don't you know have what I'm stain. saying? Don't like, some stains. of y'all is doing it the wrong way. Now, I appreciate y'all putting your, your, your being strong enough and uh, brave enough to put your bodies on the internet. That's right. It's about self-confidence, You know, man. and having that confidence. I'm just saying, like, make sure your, your photo opportunity is... You can't... All right, you don't have to have a J-Lo body to have self-confidence in yourself. That's number all. one. No, I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just saying uh, some of y'all are doing these pictures the wrong way. But like, that, that, that's how... Like, old girl got the mad, messy bathroom and shit. Like, nobody wants to see the messy bathroom or your, like, weird co-star in the back. Like, Yo, but did she have the surgery? Dirty, like, her, like her gut looked like she had like a surgery, or she ate a meatball or something. Know, like, maybe just... she just had breakfast and she got inspired after she saw the picture. I swear she's two months pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And then this lady, like, she no, she's the, good. I, I like her. This lady got the dirty mirror. Like, just clean your mirrors off. Is all I'm saying. Not just the dirty mirror. She got stains on a on a black drawers. That's and and you're 32. Like JLo's 50. Like I feel like you, I don't know, man. Well, she just... got she got time to tighten it up. See if there's any more on here. But no, nah, like come on, she she got that Monica Lewinsky. Stain on her on her panty, like come on. Uh, man. Like, there was only a couple of them in this particular article, but rule number one for bathroom selfies: make sure that your, mm-hmm. your window, your window, your mirror is clean, your window. Yeah. and uh, make sure that the shit inside the picture, mm-hmm. like just crop the picture. Like, it's, cell phones are amazing these days, and mm-hmm. like nobody, like if you're gonna take the selfie, why are you gonna hide your face? You know what I'm saying? Like the phone has that little timer on it. You could post it. You could check it out. Then you could. Take the picture and make well, it seem like you got an actual photographer. Hiding or, their face for a reason. Or in this chick's case, you know what I'm saying? You could fucking just have this weird random dude in the background take the picture for you. He, he like. But anyway, shout out to J Lo for being 50. Yeah. And still looking fucking amazing. But, but again, like the thing about it is like no matter what size, shape, height, color that you are, it's just about self confidence. And then with the self confidence, it's getting something that compliments you so rather than look like you're forever 21 just embrace the fact that you're 42 like the fuck yeah i almost did a I almost did a bathroom selfie today but uh my abs wasn't really popping i'm glad um <laughs> now nah, you know I, what though i like, thought about it yo because yo you, like i said yo you gotta have that that good confidence to be out there but yeah and, and and it's not about body shaming people it's like yo why are you forty two years old with a dirty I, with a dirty bathroom? Not just dirty, no, oh, yeah, not just a dirty bathroom. Dirty drawers on with with stains on it. Number one, that's gross. Number two is like, yo, if you're a size twelve, wear a size twelve. Be cool with it. Don't try to squeeze your size twelve self into a size eight because you're trying to stay under double digits. That's not sexy. That's not sexy. It's just making you look like a squeezed out. You look like toothpaste. a paste. You look like yeah. You look like a squeeze bottle of toothpaste, or you look like, like one of those cans of biscuits. Oh and yeah. You got to do it the right way. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, like wear the bathing suit that fits. Yeah. And, shit, and uh, make sure your background is is you know and see, photo photo worthy and shit. And and I know you're not much of a fan for for other reasons, but no, that's why I kind of like Lizzo because Lizzo is a big chick and she's wearing clothes that compliment her, even though it's skimpy, but it's in her size. Like it's not like yo, she's Lizzo wears her size. You know she what I'm wears her size. She wears her size. She just a little bit too uh, open with it. Ratchety uh, for she's, my taste. She's, bu- she's busting it open too much for you. Personally, she's a little too ratchety for my taste. But I like. I love the self confidence. But yo, her self confidence is on the ten. She's you like, can't tell her shit. She's on her. She's on her Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson. The 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 Australian comic. The, the, oh, the, the bigger chick from. Uh, 
Um, uh, and she's doing the, she's doing the commercials. She does though. those commercials and shit. Match dot com commercials. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Or or even what's her name? And nothing sexier uh, than actual self confidence because you could wear like lingerie and be like, oh, and be like, uh, well, um, I I, sh- I should have put lotion on. Like, you know, I wasn't really noticing it that much, but now that you brought it up, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> ankles look like you was stepping on some flower or some shit, like. Yeah, make sure you lotion up too. Make sure you lotion up <laughs> if you're gonna take these bathroom selfies, okay. especially if they're full body shots. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Make sure your feet are not dirty, okay. or like make sure your hands is lotioned up. Um, <laughs> dirty feet, yeah. Like, ladies. yeah, well, when they're laying on the bed and they're kicking their feet up behind them, and their feet is mad black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like come on. Ah, uh, come on. So there's there's rules there's rules to the internet picture game. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure you have your shit all in order. Oh, yeah. And you know what, too? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to come up with a checklist for, for next week's party <laughs> when we're at the thing. So when you're DJing, I got uh, conversation pieces to have for people. So, yeah, if you want to talk about uh, little topics like that, like dirty feet and things that you should do when you're taking sel- internet selfies or bathroom selfies, or even what we had back in the day about um, gym etiquettes. Yeah, right? gym, gym etiquette. These are the important. type of stuff that we could talk about when you when you come through to the um, to the Saturday Saturday conversation social. Yo, I'm not gonna talk to you about gym etiquette, uh, but uh, so uh, I can't clip my toenails. Oh no, you can't talk about it because you DJ. D- yeah, I'm busy. Uh, but you know, oh, yeah, I oh, monkey yeah. will talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Bring the smoke. I got your conversation, B. That's all it's about. You know, he'll be there to uh, combat all the. Uh, all the anti Beyonce shit that you talk about on the show. <laughs> oh, that you talk and the, about. And the, the anti Taylor Swift. Nah, fuck nah. Shit. Nah, uh, I'll be promoting that anti Taylor Swift about. shit heavy. <laughs> I'll be promoting that. No, again, Taylor Swift is just a real time gentrification of Beyonce. Like, she waits until Beyonce does something and then she follows up afterwards. It's like, yo, like, it, I, 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 I feel kind of funny going. To, to that part of town, going to Dykeman to get my Carl Kanai, so I'm going to wait for Macy's to come up with some other bootleg shit. So that's all it is. That, Maybe that, she lives too far from Dykeman, yo. Come on, man. Fucking Like, she don't have enough money to have somebody go to Dykeman for her? <laughs> like, come she on. She got nobody in her team that even knows where Dykeman is, kid. Yeah, somebody on her team is probably saying uh, that Dykeman. Well, what about the tolerance? What are you calling them in a Dykeman food? Oh, shut the fuck up. What? Yeah, Dykeman. Um, a dyke man. Uh, somebody on her team will most likely be somebody who'll be like, oh, what about the tolerance? I don't oh. know. I don't know what's happening with that. Nah, um, nah, nah. Fuck that shit. Nah, nah. You ever had somebody come up to you about, you say something and be like, not know what you're talking about? And then trying to hold like this big social media conference on you? Nah. Had it done to me once and nah, that was the end like, of that chapter. The internet smoke doesn't really come for me. Nah, it came uh, for me a couple of times. But you know, shit, I'm here. If you got some internet smoke for me, you know what I'm saying? I'll blow that shit out for you. you know what Go I'm to saying? him with your Beyonce smoke. You know. Because uh, he's not going to play any Beyonce that night. No, nah, I'm going to play some Beyonce. Uh, Beyonce. It's going to be Destiny's Child. Beyonce got hits, man. She does. Beyonce got hits. I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not a fan of her, of her singing abilities, but you know. She's an entertainer. Beyonce got hits, man. Like, no, you, see, can't, Beyonce you can't a- deny... If a motherfucker got hits, you don't necessarily have to be a fan of them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not a fan of Jordan, but like you can't deny I, Jordan's greatness. I'm not a fan of LeBron, but you can't you can't deny mm-hmm. LeBron's greatness. I'm not a fan. We, we broke this down last year when we had our Mount Rushmore of R&B on like, what makes an yeah. R&B artist. I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Beyonce like that. I'm never going to pay to go see a Beyonce show. At first, I think them shits are too expensive, but I also don't <coughs> like enough of her music like that. Yes, it to, doesn't to, speak to, to you. To spend money to go see Beyonce, but you can't deny that she got wild hits. Mm-hmm. Wild hits. And from what I hear, she puts on a great show. It's not just her standing on stage in one spot. Nah, she going, dances and does the entertainment and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not a fan. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend my money to go see Beyonce. See, and and on the flip side, I'm not a fan of Taylor Swift. Not her music. Nothing. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna spend money to go see Taylor Swift either. But she got hits. It's like my girl. He's fifty. She got hits, but I'm like, I'm not gonna recognize those hits. You got to. 
I, I recognize to, them. Dog. I recognize like, them that all right, they're there. They're there. They she got hits, man. Like you can't deny hits it. for them, not for me. Like she, it doesn't hit with me. Hits are hits. <laughs> It doesn't hit with hits me. Hits are hits. All right, let me let me put it like this. Then I the, the the plaque she gets. All right. the plaque she gets on the wall for her number one hit. All right, don't me, say hits for me. Hits for Dawood. They all just all say all number all one. All That's no, all no, they no, say. No, no, no. But wait, wait, wait. Let me put it like this. Vanilla Ice. He got one hit. No, no, no. He had one hit. Yeah. That song never hit with me. That's my point. But he still had a hit. He had a hit. I recognize that it was it, it made money. It, it was a viable money. song. That's, That's all you got to do. And I recognize that. But for me, it wasn't a hit. Another one. But you don't get to determine the hits. The, the, no, no, the, I the, don't. I don't. You get, to, you get to say, I don't like that song. But you can't say that it wasn't a hit. I. It just didn't. It just You just don't like it. It's like... Uh, all right, so when we say it's a hit, it means... It's a hit. That's it, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a accept, it's acceptable it's a, it's a, by the it's masses. A, it's a billboard top 50. All right, let me put it like this for you then. It's a Billboard Top 50. Right. That's a hit. All right, let me put it like uh, this for you. No matter how you describe it, like whether it's Two Chains or... or I, I, I got a prime example or, or for Bieber, you. Or Bieber or Usher or Neo or so, anybody else. Like, so I just finished doing the, the reggae podcast, right? There's yeah. certain things that I won't put on a reggae podcast. I'll, I'll just listen in general. Now, mind you, Snow's Informer was a hit song. Yeah. But for real people that are in the industry, reggae artists, they'll be like, that's shit. But that's their, that's their opinion. Like A majority of the motherfuckers bought that record or he wouldn't have had a hit. Like I, Informer the was a number one record. People that are not into the culture would say, oh, I like that song. I'm going to buy that. But people that are actually in the culture, it's not hitting with them because it doesn't hit with them. But that that's how that's how Taylor Swift but, is with but me. I, but I bet you that shit was on getting played in Jamaica. It depends on number one who the DJ was. But number but, two, but if it's getting spins there, that's all that matters. A better example. You you can't you can't be like it's not a hit because I don't like it or because it's not a hit in Jamaica. It's like Mad Lion. No, no, no. I got a better point. The, the Mad Lion probably didn't resonate in Jamaica like that either because it was more hip hop. And I don't even know if it was in the top 50, but it was big in the hood. No, Mad Lion. No, Mad Lion. It was he, big on the hip hop charts. Mad Lion, Super Cat. Um, they all get love. In, in, in you know what I mean? Um, Sean reggae. Paul? Sean Paul got mad commercial hits. Yeah, he does, but people, people accept Sean Paul for who he is. Now, let me put it like this. But it, it, just because. Just because you're not accepted doesn't mean you don't got hits. Snoop Lion is a prime example. He thought that he could reinvent himself as a roster Yo, that because roster, he smokes mad weed. That roster album was trash. No, but, no, people, no, even before it dropped, Rastafarians was booing this dude off the stage like, yo, get out the culture. Yo, this is not for you. Yo, stop trying to perpetrate and uh, appropriate our culture when only thing you do is smoke weed. Rastafari is more than just smoke. But are we weed. talking about culture or are we talking about hit songs? Hits. Then it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, if that album would have went platinum, it would have been really weird because it was trash. But it still would have been a hit album for Snoop. Snoop got mad hits. 50, a lot of people don't fuck with 50. They think he's a snitch, whatever the fuck. They think he's a sellout. Now he's doing TV and shit. But 50 got hits. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't take it away from the artists just because they're not popping no more. It's like R. Kelly. Okay. R. Kelly fucking molested little girls and did whatever he did, kept bitches in the basement, all that shit. But if you look at his, if you just take it from the from the musical standpoint, R. Kelly had more hits in the 90s than most motherfuckers. Like if you take R. Kelly out of your play catalog, you've taken away like a quarter of the songs that was on the radio in like 1992. But this is the thing, is unless you're from the culture... You're not going. You you're gonna. You could might be accepted by the masses, but, but what's the, nobody nobody in reggae is gonna accept Snow. Right, but we're not talking about reggae. Or, we're just talking about even we're Snoop. talking about music in general. Like you can't say that Taylor Swift doesn't have hits because she makes pop music. She has hits. She makes pop music. And see, it's hits. So if you're not a fan of pop music, then you can be like, I'm not a fan of pop music. But you can't say that Taylor Swift's hit records are not hit records because they don't resonate with you. All right, let, let me rephrase it. 
those are considered hits because they're hitting with that core audience they're that are with buying the, the music. Fucking hundred million records that she sold worldwide. It's, like they're just hitting you, with people you, that are buying those you just, records. You just didn't buy the record. You know what I'm saying? I didn't buy the record. But when I like from a DJ perspective, if I'm doing a specific kind of party, I gotta have these songs. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You you gotta look at music for what it is. It's like, all right, I'm not a fan of this, but. I got to know that this is a hit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially as a DJ, you can't walk into an event and you're playing for a corporate party and, and you that, know they're going to want to hear this shit, but you don't add it to your record collection mm. because it's not a hit to you. But you see, that's what makes me a little bit different. That's why I like the avenue that I pick because if I'm in a club, I have to basically play to the masses. In my podcast, like, it's this is who I am. Ugh. Yeah, and yeah, the Ooh, water that one went down the wrong way, and and the ice melted. But this is who I am. Oh and, right, for your it, podcast, you curate your podcast however for, you want to curate and, and your this podcast. Is who I am, yeah. and you're curating your podcast for your core audience. Yeah, your core audience probably is not a fan of that shit, so you don't have to play that shit. But if you go to a like a mainstream area, you have to recognize it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and that's why, like, I don't really rock with Shaggy. Like, <clears throat> but Shaggy I, I, got I, his too. Shaggy got hits. Right now he got this is this this the this is the way that we should put it. Shaggy got popular hits for the popular the pop isn't music that, crowd. Is that how you get a hit? No 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 wait 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 the that, pop music but that's crowd. That's what makes a hit. Okay, you appeal to the masses, but then what happens is is you lose a lot of your soul and who you are by appealing to the masses. Do you? In that case, yes. How? Because. Do you either want to make money or you don't? Like this is the age. This is the age. And that and that is, is the, the ultimate question. Argument. And that's the ultimate in, question. In music, you come up in a specific genre, and you're like, well, mm. so I'm gonna. Keep- would you consider um, Vanilla Ice a better rapper than? No, Vanilla um, Ice was a terrible rapper. But like, no, 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 no. no but here's, wait. here's the example I'm gonna use. Right, you have a guy like Pitbull. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cuban background. You know, raised old school Cuban. Mm-hmm. All of that, mm-hmm. you know, comes out. I'm Cuban B, and and makes one of the hardest rap albums ever. Yep, in the nineties, mm-hmm. the boat lift was crazy. He did one rap album. Everything else he's put out after that has been like straight mainstream pop with a Cuban flair, like the shit that he came up on. Mm-hmm. It's like yo, but you can't. You might not be a fan of Pitbull, like new Pitbull, but you can't say that Pitbull don't have hit records. Pitbull oh, no, no. makes hits. Khaled makes hits. You know what I mean? Like you can't like Bieber makes hits. Chris Brown, they make hits. Like it's like you either make hits or you don't make hits. That and, Chris Brown could go out and, 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 too, and making what makes a hit isn't about the little niche areas. Like, you know, underground rappers don't like Chris Brown, but you can't say that Chris Brown don't got hits. All you can say is that I don't fuck with Chris Brown like that. Well, yeah. That's See, it. That's all you can say. You can't be like uh, you just be like, I can't fuck with him like that. Like he, he, and he the, yeah, he makes hits, but it's not what I listen to. No, and see, and this is this is the point though. Ultimately, just because you make hits and you appeal to the masses doesn't make you a good artist. Sure, it does. And this is this is my sure point. Sure, it does. And like, this, how does it wait, not wait, wait, make you a good artist? Wait, 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 wait. And this is my point. Vanilla Ice, with that one song, probably sold more records. Than KRS One, are you gonna say Vanilla Ice is a better artist than KRS One because of record sales and because he had no, that record, hit? No, record sales. His one hit. Here's the thing: is better than all of KRS's you're, probably you're, put together in terms of Billboard status. Maybe not. You're spinning it in a weird area because, like, you're saying that like you're you're confusing artistry with being a popular artist. You know what I'm saying? Just it's like. Basquiat draws mm-hmm. like a fucking four-year-old second grader. Mm-hmm. His paintings are worth millions. Mm-hmm. His collection of painting is probably worth more than a painter who's a much better artist. Technical artist. Like technical artist. Mm-hmm. But is not selling those, he's not doing those numbers with his painting. It's about how you appeal to the masses mm. is what makes you was it's what makes you a superstar. Mm. It's what gives you those hits. So if you look at like Basquiat, he's got hit paintings. 
mm-hmm. versus uh, somebody who might not have as many paintings, but they're better. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make him a better artist. It just means that he's more popular because he has the hits. You know what I'm saying? Like 50, I don't think is a better MC than Big. J Electronica? Or J Electronica, who got no records out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But J Electronica is a much better artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, I don't, you, you can be like, I can't fuck with 50, but you can't deny that if you drop, uh, Candy shop, mm. that the crowd or, or majority of the crowd is gonna be like, this is my shit right here. But if you drop a J Electronica song, there's gonna be like five dudes in the back that even know what the song is. Mm. Doesn't make him a better artist than J Electronica. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's it's about mm. like it's about mainstream. It's like, do I want to have mainstream popularity and 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 the commercial deals and be able to make the money, or do I just want to do the craft to do the craft? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can't. What happens is like we we can't disrespect the people who have chosen to make the dollars. Some of those people are much better artists, and they're making the dollars. Mm. Like to me, like a Bruno Mars is an incredibly talented dude. He can play like seven instruments. Mm. He's a fantastic writer, but a lot of people don't like his sound. You know what I'm saying? They don't respect his sound because of whatever. Well, you know what I'm saying, but see, you can't deny me, that the man got hits. See, whether, now, you're, whether you're a fan of his sound or not. See, just because, and yeah, they was making a point about Devin the dude in the in the chat there, and how he adjusts to um, whatever he's doing. But um, just because an artist, just because a person, I, I should use that word first, just because a person. Is doing something that is popular with the people doesn't make them a great a, a good artist. No, it's a combination of a of a, of a bunch of things. Their stage presence. Their, no, because this you know what is what I'm saying. When you look at great no, artists, you got to look at everything. No, because as a comedian, right? There's some comedians that actually put in the work to the craft, and then there's some comedians that will only say things to get an applause. Oh, give it up for the troops. Oh, single mothers. Oh, we got any parents in the house? And get those, you know, the warm-up claps, right? Because who's not going to clap for somebody in, in the army, right? Who's not going to clap yeah, for... Yeah, but you can't, you can't... No, 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 but if... no, You but can't wait. downgrade them because of their methods. No, 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 no but at, wait. You still got to look at the jokes. No, 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 no. But if that is the majority of their, their set, where they're getting these cheap claps... Right? And they're getting the majority of cheap claps. Right? It's like, oh, so I'm supposed to recognize them as a as a hit because they got a noxious amount of cheap la- claps? Or if people are coming there to see them. Absolutely. No, no, no. Because that's what makes a that's what makes a hit, right? From a commit from a comedic standpoint, when your name is on the marquee and motherfuckers come to see you, that's a hit. That's a hit come out like that you're you're a you're a hit comedian. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think that Kevin Hart is necessarily necessarily like incredibly funny. On like some of the stuff he says is funny, mm-hmm. but I think he's a better. Not Kevin Hart. Um, fuck is his name? Cat Williams. I think he's better on screen as an actor mm-hmm. than I do as a stand up. And I think he's funny as a stand up, but I think he's better as an actor. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna downgrade Cat Williams because when his name is on the marquee, motherfuckers is going to see him. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you can't just downgrade them because you don't like them. You still have to recognize their station. All right. So you got to you got to recognize their station in life. Like they they're there. You can't downgrade because of their methods. You know what I'm saying? It's like DL Hughley is a is a is considered like a top level like goat level comic and he made his career off of roasting motherfuckers in the first two rows. Mm. How is that? I mean, to to some people that's not comedy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, uh, a Steve Harvey mm. who made his career off of telling jokes or a Sinbad who doesn't curse. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't knock a motherfucker's methods as long as they get the same result as you. Or if they get a better result as you and they seem to be doing less work, that's their method. You got to make your method work. And this is, this, this is really what I was really getting at. There are people that do have hits that I don't like, like Shaggy. Right, it wasn't um, me. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's there's artists that I I can't appreciate 
Informa, Snow, I can't appreciate that. Um, Vanilla Ice, I can't appreciate it. Now, yes, he has hits. And yes, I recognize that it's a hit. But I don't want to put any kind of energy behind that kind of taking a shortcut to now skip the line of Black Moon and KRS-One because... Because they know some some more people. They got a better network. No, but because what they did was is they did something very gimmicky. Yeah. Right? Sometimes that's what you got to do to get there. But see, now... From, so for, you're, mad at, you're mad at the fast track? No. I could recognize the hit. The artist creating the hit, I don't have to recognize. Because even um, I'm feeling hot. And this is a prime example. Growing up, my mother and father, and you know, always played Caribbean music. Calypso and Soka. Bust oh, what the, up, Jeff Silver in the chat? Right? So, Bust the Point Dexter had that song, I'm Feeling Hot. For a lot of people in the Caribbean, felt it, they felt like it, he was stealing the song, number one, from Deo. He, he basically right, right, right. stole that. Then, on top of it, it's a white guy that's stealing the culture to make money off the culture, and none of it is for the culture. It's just all about his bottom line. So... I'm feeling hot, hot. He even stole it from somebody else that had that song at the time. But that Buster Point Dexter song was recognized as a bigger hit than the actual song that he stole from. So no, don't Red recognize don't steal shit all the time though? No, no, but no, but either way, him stealing that song, right? Not being from the culture. And just basically was like, oh, this is a quick money grab. I cannot recognize him as an artist for that shortcut. Does he have other hits? No. That is why I cannot recognize him. That is why Rappin' Duke, that is a hit. I cannot recognize Rappin' Duke as a hit artist. No, I'm not saying you have to like, but he got a hit. So you kind of do have to recognize him. It's like Informer, Informer was a hit song. But I'm not going to recognize Snow as a hit reggae artist. He had a hit song. Cool. But I'll still, give you that. He's still a hit record making artist. You have to recognize him as a hit record making artist if he has a hit. If you, like basic, if you have a hit right now. If you stole if, something basically from somebody. Music. All and music, wanted first, it and manipulated it. And now I got a hit. First it's called a sample. People do it. People, like hip hop is notorious for stealing other people's music and making hits out of it. Yeah, but it's, I mean, Diddy made a whole career off of stealing seventies music and turning it and returning it into no, like but super hits. Even with remember that's that song, I, I got the power. They had Chill Rob G. Yeah, and they had Snap. Snap was recognized as the hit song, so, as the hit artist, but he stole the song. Did he from Chill Rob G? Did he steal the song? He stole the song. Did yo, he, did, did Chill Rob G get a check? Yo. I, I did Chill Rob G get a check? Yes, he did. And then, I could, then he didn't steal the song. He purchased that shit. No, oh, wait, wait. Oh, meaning, you know what I'm saying? Like no, if, I mean, if, in terms of he got the check from uh, if he Snap? Got, no, I don't know. Then, then, I, then I, you, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I sample a song right now and, I'm, and, it, comes, and it turns into a I hit. Could, I, could, I could get the... I, could get, the, I don't the, have the thing, but I have the paperwork. It's the only hit that I have, but I sampled the beat. As long as I paid for my sample... You gotta respect it if it's you a didn't, hit. He didn't sample. He didn't sample the beat. He sampled the whole song. Yeah, lyrics and all. So that's the Diddy method. No, no, no. The Diddy, yeah, no. The, that's the Diddy method, dog. No, mind you, that's this the Diddy was, method. If you listen to it, 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 it can't. And, be, it can't be the Diddy method, especially if, back, if it was before Diddy. It was before and if, Diddy. And if you go back and you listen to like a lot of Dre beats, he snatches like whole like rhythm sections. For his this, beats. This is my point, though. So Dre is not a dope producer. He's not a hit-making producer because... I didn't say that. Because he samples? I That's what you're saying. No, 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 That's no. Exactly no, 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 I'm Feeling Hot by Bustle Point Dexter was tempo, lyrics, and melody all yeah. took in. It was not sampled. Now, what Diddy does is he'll take the beat, and then the lyrics are totally different. The message... Uh, might not be all the time. Not all the time, but not the, all the time. So it's like you got. But no, no, no. Are no. you discrediting no. the number of Diddy's hits where he just took the whole song? So I'll be, I'll be and, there for you. So where he took the whole hook. So you're telling and me the beat and the melody. You you can't tell me that and what, use it as a hook what in chill a song? Rob G. What happened to Chill Rob G. by Snap is not robbery. You cannot. But we tell don't me. know that it's robbery. I have articles to prove that it was robbery. You, I just asked you that, and you said you didn't know if he got paid. 
I don't know exactly, but I if, know exactly that there was a lawsuit. If he got paid, there was a lawsuit. But if he got paid, then it's not thievery. Wait, 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 wait. There's a lawsuit where Chill Rob G took Snap to to court. Even in the case of what was that song? That other song I just had, right? It was but the boy's the point, Dexter. It was word for word, temple for temple, lyric for lyric. It wasn't as if Oh, I paid you money to buy this from you. It's, oh, I like yeah, that. I'm going to take it. It's called a remake. So what you're saying is Lauren Hill didn't have a hit because she re-sang Roberta Flack? That's not a hit? You can't recognize that hit? There's a, word for word. There's a difference. How? What's the difference? The difference is what you she just... She took a whole Roberta Flack song The difference is what, sang it. what you just pointed out. The difference is, is when you pay for it and then you actually acknowledge the person that you took it from. So it's not stealing if I acknowledge, yo, I paid you money for this, this and in honor of Daryl, this, this is the song that I'm doing. But, or, and or, or and all a, the credits, and all the credits, it's there. Yeah. Right? No, wait, 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 wait. But in the Chill Rob G case... And in the Bust the Point next the case, there was no okay. acknowledgement but those are, of them stealing the but songs. Those are, those are two cases. And I cannot and, acknowledge them as but you're taking, artists for you're, taking a shortcut. You're spinning, you're spinning the point. My, no. the, the point is that you can't... The point that you're you, making you, is... You can't hate on a motherfucker or call them less of an artist because you don't like their hits. Now, if they're stealing hits, that's a little different. But you, you're, we started this on the... I don't like Taylor Swift because I don't like her music, so she doesn't make hits to me. That's not, you can't no, no, say I, that. No, I said her music doesn't hit with me. Right, but then you said this, you don't recognize her hits. Because they don't hit with me. But they're still hits. But they're not hits with but me. But you have to recognize them as hits. That's all I'm saying. You can't be like, her songs don't count. When she sits at Billboard at the top of Billboard for 25 weeks, you can't be like, well, her number ones don't count. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't you can't just separate them because they don't hit with you. It was my original point. Wait, and o- somehow we got on. O- Ovechkin got 700 goals. Cool, that doesn't matter to me. Right, but you can't you can't. I, say, rec- I recognize that he got it, but, but you, I don't. It you, doesn't resonate with me. But you can't say that he's not. It doesn't resonate with. But me. But you can't say that he's not one of the best goal scorers in the history of hockey. I don't follow hockey to even have that conversation. I'm like, oh, he got but, 700 so goals. So then you're, you're choosing a you're, you're choosing an argument to back out of. What we were originally talking about. No, what I was originally saying was is that just because you have a hit song doesn't mean I have to recognize you as a hit artist. Sure it does. Sure it does. Yeah, you're, artist that has a hit song. You're saying, yeah, basically. You don't but have to you're be not a hit artist. So, wait, wait, wait. Being a hit artist means that anytime you as an artist would, does something, I would it's say, going to hit. I would say, right. So, Bust the Point Dexter has a hit song. Everything that he's done after that has not hit. So, he's, so not, he's an artist with a hit song. So he's an artist with a hit song. You have to recognize I don't, that. I don't have but to don't recognize have, him as a hit artist. That was my point. Right. But you, you went to that point from Taylor Swift. So I'm on the beginning of the point. T- you spun it all the way back to some dude who stole a song in the 70s. All I'm saying is you can't say that Taylor Swift is not a hit artist when she has like 35 hit records. She's a hit artist. You're just not a fan. Just like I can't say that Beyonce is not a hit artist because I'm not a fan. You say that she can't sing, but she can sing. I don't think she, that she not, not, not that in the vein sing. that you want not in the vein that you want her to sing it. No, I just don't think that she can sing. I don't think Babyface can sing. I don't think she can sing. I don't think a lot of these people that got hit records can sing. Mm-hmm. That's just my personal opinion. But I can't say that Beyonce is not a hit artist because I don't think that she can sing. I don't think Mary J can sing. Mary J got fucking 35 hit records too. I think Mary J's voice is awful. Live. In general, there's only so much you could do in a studio. You got terrible sound going in, you're going to get pretty terrible sound coming out. I don't care how good you are as an engineer. Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? But you... I think that Shaka Khan destroyed the, the national anthem. And she's one of my favorite singers. She's old now. It was good. Uh, she's like, forgot the words and all kinds of shit. But anyway. But the fact of the matter is, just because we don't like them doesn't mean that they're not hit artists. Now, in your, your examples, those guys, they had one hits. They, they, one hit, those are one hit wonders. Yeah. Vanilla Ice, one hit wonder. Not a hit, he's a better fucking motocross bike dude. Yeah, but I don't have to recognize them as hit artists. I could recognize them as artists with a hit song. 
I think that if they have multiple hit records, you have to recognize them as a hit artist. All right, so baseball terms, right? Depending on how many times you come up to bat and how many times you get a hit will make you an all-star and will make you a Hall of Famer, right? So if you come up to bat 10 times and you get one hit, yeah, 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 you're, just, you're just a guy. If you get two hits, you're still below the Mendoza line. So once you get like three hits, all right, uh, yeah, all stop. You know, if you keep it up every time yeah, you come out with 10 songs. If you're, three for, 10, if you're three for 10, you're a fucking Hall of Famer in baseball. At a 10 song clip. But everything is. But if you only have three songs that you've ever released and one of them are a hit, then you're batting a thousand, you're batting 300. That, that just means that, that all right, that, that, you wasn't good enough to get more than three songs. So Biggie's not a hit artist? So Biggie has more than three songs. Does he? Biggie has two, three albums. Biggie has two albums. One was a double. Three albums. And one got released after he died, which was basically remakes. But even with the double album, that's still two, three albums. But... How many hits came off that? Came off those, how many? How many mainstream hits came off that record? So, that being the case, though, Here's, that's all I'm saying. Like there are there are hit artists, and it's like yo, if you if you only put out five songs, and, and two of them are hits, you're you're batting like fucking thirty percent, forty percent. And if that was the case, don't you think that you would have more songs? If a, maybe, you don't know what happens to people. You know what I'm saying? Lauryn Hill got one album. Maybe two, right? It's two. But one that people recognize. Yeah. Well, the Unplugged was actually pretty good. But yeah, she, she's only touring the one. And but she's still going on tour. And people are still going to see her. Yeah. Technically, you know what I'm saying? And she won a bunch of Grammys for that shit. But on that one album, there was basically... On that one album of what? 12, 13, 14 songs? Jay Rude the Damager. Uh, well, two he, records. Two hits. No, he, he had more than... More records than that, but nobody knows about him. But the thing is, is, is I, I do you would consider him a hit artist. No, he's one of my favorites, but I wouldn't consider him a hit artist. Like somebody a hit artist is every time they come out, is gonna hit. Um, Jada Kiss, number one. Um, he's at the top of the list because I think he's already coming out with something. Um, Jay Z. Um, who's another one that's a favorite of mine that I always look for? Ghostface is another person I look for. Right, but Anderson you gotta remember Pack. that everybody's gonna have their everybody's gonna have their personal preferences on who they're always looking for. Like I'm always looking out for Redman, mm -hmm. but Redman wouldn't be considered a hit artist. He got no number one records. He don't even got no top fifty records that I'm aware of. No, he does. He he just came out with a new one too. Yeah, but is it a top fifty record? On Billboard, like if you look at Billboard, you're gonna find Redman's name but, because that's how. Like, you can be like, I really love this music. This is my music. To me, these are hit records. But when you look at like the global scheme of things, you know what I'm saying? Is this person a hit artist because we like them a lot, and because everybody we know also likes them a lot? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The per here's an here's an even here's an even better example. Demetrius Andre has a major boxing title. Can't get a big fight because nobody knows who he is outside of New England. And that that was actually going to bring me to my next point. He holds one of the four major boxing titles. That, that and was, he can't get a big fight. That was bringing me to my next point is that just because you have a song and it doesn't hit or you have a song that does hit. And one thing that actually makes a major difference it is your management team. Of course. And your pro who you and have, your promotion team who you and your have, management team. At the end of the day it's always who you know, right? It's who you know. If if you're a better bead maker, right? Mm -hmm. Sh shout out to Daddy Dearest Designs with the headphones. I got them back on the beads. Holla at your man. Um but let's just say for example you've been doing this bead shit for a mad long time. Intricate, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The bead work is amazing. Tomorrow I decide I'm going to make some bee jewelry, mm -hmm. but I got connects and I'm now I make one piece of jewelry. I sell it to Alex and Ani and now I'm on billboards. I'm, I'm doing jewelry making seminars and shit, mm -hmm. but I basically am making the same jewelry that you're making. I'm just copying your shit. I'm buying your shit and reverse engineering it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make me a better bead maker. It just means I got better connections. 
But you, but in the masses, they're going to call me the greatest bead maker of all time. Because I sold more beaded jewelry than everybody. But you see... And, and every, and, and every the, piece of jewelry I put out, people will line up to buy it. And that, that is really where, where my stance is. Is that Am I not going to be recognized, though, as, I respect a, as a master bead, bead maker? Well, this is where I and my mentality and my mindset is. I give credit to people that actually not just put in the work, know the work. Of course. So, yes, you can make beads. But then knowing the combination of beads, like what hematite, what the properties of hematite are and what the properties of... Um, of course. But like and some I might, people... I might have basic knowledge, but at the end of the day, if I got a better management squad than you do... And that's... and that I'm going to be looked at as the best bead maker in the world. And you're going to be like... Like, damn, this dude fucking basically stole my idea and now he's making millions and people are recognizing me as the best bead maker in the world and you're just a dude who had a couple of nice pieces like that's what kind of happens in a lot of these a lot of these areas and and that for me is that is why i see those things up front like the artistry behind buster point dexter the artistry behind snap stealing the song from chill rob g i see the fact that it was zero artistry the only thing that took place there was is, all right, how can I take it? How can I make it much as much money as possible? So if this person want to take me to court, I could delay and actually win because my money is a little bit longer than this. That's the name of the game, man. And I, that, I, I can't respect that. No, nobody said you have to respect it. And that is, that, gotta, is that, that is why I'm like, if I can't respect it, I can't recognize you, that you part. kind of have to, though. I, 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 I see mean, it, but gotta, I don't want to give it any credit. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, like, you can't, because I, I still had to do the work to get there. I still had to, I mean, it's not like, no, you know what I'm saying? I but, still got to put the beads together. Even if I'm following a blueprint, I got to put them together. I got to do the work. I got to get out there. I got to tour. You see, I got to go on Oprah and all that shit. But there's the thing. You know what I'm saying? So, some working. beads are dyed. Some beads are plastic. Some beads yeah, should look. not ever be worn and got wet. See, these are certain things that. It's the, it's the Diddy method. See, I, like, I, to I me, don't want to call it the Diddy method. To me, like, like if anybody is like, Diddy's that guy who took a bunch of re... Like, when's the last time Diddy had an original song that didn't come from a sample of something? <sighs> Maybe see. big shit, but a lot of big beats was sampled. Nah, but Nobody's see, making... there's, there's built-in pressure in what Puff does. It, it, does it's... that make it any better? No, but there's built-in you know pressure. Saying? And you got, like, let's not even, like, begin to talk about the fact that, like, a lot of these guys have hired guns underneath them that make all of these beats. Mm. Dre's not sitting in the lab making a hundred thousand making like a thousand beats a year. He got dudes that make beats for him. Did he got a team? Those guys make beats, he buys those beats, he puts his name on those beats. He didn't make those beats. He paid a guy to make those beats and then he like came in and went, yeah. Uh -huh, Turn on uh, Diddy. Turn down the volume on yeah. that. Add some reverb. You know, he executive produced those beats, mm -hmm. but he didn't make those tracks. If right now I had 50 hot beats, I could send them, to, I could send them around to people and people will buy them shits mm. outright, put their name on them, and nobody will ever know that I made those tracks mm. except me and the contracts that I have that show that I made those beats. Mm. But I'll probably have to sign some sort of NDA, yeah. so I'll never be able to talk about that shit. Unless you're willing to give up the money plus more yeah. for opening your mouth. Like, I know guys that made beats for guys that, and you're like, yo, you didn't even make this beat. I heard this beat when it was getting made mm. here in Rhode Island. Now mm. it's on this album, and that dude's not getting the credit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, am I, supposed, like is, is, am I supposed to now, like, have less respect for this guy? True. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like, it'd be like if you had a team of people making beats for you. It, you get to a certain level, you don't have to do that shit anymore. You just be like, yo, make this, make this, make a, a hundred of these. Mm -hmm. This is how you make it. Go sit over there, make that shit. I'm gonna put Daddy Dearest on them and flip them, and I'm gonna pay you your, you know, bead making fee, and that's it. Yeah, and see, for, for somebody like me, most likely I would have a, the way for you to undercut me is cutting the prices. For me, the cost is not just the cost of the materials itself. Right. It's the cost. But it's of not even the, about the, that. the development about of the the. Um, development of the blueprint, then the development of getting the materials, and then 
learning about the materials and then putting them together. So, excuse me, there's certain things with beads that I do that, yeah, there's more research behind it than the actual just, oh, I like that color, I like that color, oh, those course, colors look good together. Again, but what's stopping you from finding other great bead makers in the area and just paying them for their product and then putting your name on it? Well, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you had the money to do it, why, why wouldn't you? You but that's saying? America. Oh, shit, I found my fucking ear pods. Oh. oh, there you go. Yo, these shit's been missing for like a month. You need to wash your clothes more often. I've man. washed these sweatpants like four times. Check your pockets, B. <laughs> Check your pockets. <laughs> i washed these pants like four times, so those of these shits even work. For, but, for me, though, overall, I'm all about the work that goes into it. I Like, yeah, I could pay less for something, but I would rather reward somebody for actually putting in the work. That's me. That that's just who I am. So for somebody like for me to give somebody like Buster Point next to like oh yeah he took the song he made it a world hit, I can't respect them for stealing. It's like Christopher Columbus like trying to steal credit for finding something that was already here. Like oh look I I, I found this like you finding your your thing in your pocket like oh shit look I found it. What if I put my hand in my pocket and I find your your thing oh shit look what I've discovered. Hey, I it's know. yours I can't steal it. Like, but that's why we have these discussions. Hey, that's you know why saying? the conversation keeps happening. Uh, right? We're up against it. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Next yeah. week, we're going to be talking about Alibi. Alibi. Next Saturday. Book Club. Book Club. Mm-hmm. Finish the motherfucking book. We'll be talking about Kindred. Kindred. Uh, we have uh, Aaron Day mm-hmm. hopefully coming on the show. We're going to confirm him. He's scheduled for this week. He's, Aaron Day, who's that? He's, uh, he, has, he owns All Day Physique, oh. he's a bodybuilder. Uh, he does the, the the fitness shows. Mm. He's a trainer. He's a re- overall good dude. He has a good story. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna get him on and uh, talk fitness and shit. And uh, we're gonna talk about this book, Kindred, mm. yep. by Octavia Butler. You got about a couple more days to finish reading that shit. Um, uh, make sure you hit us on all the social medias, man. Go to the YouTube, uh, the Saturday Conversation. Hit subscribe so you can get all the YouTube channel stuff that comes out. I have to burp. I'm holding it in. <laughs> but, uh... Make sure you tune in. No, 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 no. Go ahead uh, and belch. No, nah, so, yeah, tune in. We're always here. Online, offline. Head us up in the inbox with your questions, comments. Consider... Oh, I don't want to say consideration. We'll, we'll consider some of this hey, shit. Hey, whatever the, whatever the fuck you say, we're going to... We're going to read it. Yeah. We're going to read it on the air. Shout out to everybody who came through the chat today mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and checked out the show and uh, wished me a happy birthday. Thank y'all. Uh, you know what I'm saying? My vodka's water. Oh, right wait, now. wait, wait, wait. No label. No, no label. No, 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 nah, 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 nah. You know what I'm you saying? You can see the skull, you can see the purple label. Uh, Keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? If you want to come and uh, throw more money at me later, I'll be at the job. At the ballet. At the ballet. You know what I'm saying? I can't really drink while I'm working, but uh, I'll accept water. And. Uh, the fuck? I can't drink, man, while I'm working, so... Tell them, pass you a bag of bud, B. Uh, like, come on. Like. Like, hey, bring me whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just know if you bring me a drink, I'm not going to be able to drink that shit. But, you know, I accept gifts, money, cars, uh, trips. Don't accept how that work. Um, oh, I found a theme song for you, son. For me? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Uh, shout out to the homie Assault. He got uh, a song called Ass and Titties. The remix. <laughs> the, the remix? Two asses. <laughs> Two asses, four titties. Uh, big, big booty bitches. Come on, man. You still with this? <laughs> that's the theme. That's the theme song. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighting big booty bitches off at a cross. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, but anyway, make sure you join us on all social medias. We always appreciate y'all supporting uh, Saturday at the Alibi. Make sure you join us. We'll be pumped in all week. And uh, Bring your yeah, smoke. Uh, yeah, you got to smoke outside. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, enjoy your week and uh, we'll catch up with y'all on the flip side of next week and uh, yeah I'm about to go finish celebrating my birthday before I go to work mm-hmm. I'm finishing this uh, here glass of vodka oh, yeah I got the uh, reggae podcast out there too reggae podcast go get it uh, new moon above uh, no new moon over Zion new moon over Zion the reggae podcast yeah cause today's the new moon and plus I wanted to release it on your birthday too word get that shit <laughs> alright y'all we out peace